Hey guys, what's going on? Um, had a couple of questions over the last couple months about um, requests on how to get Emulation Station up and running, how to enable certain things, how to get specific um, emulators working. And so I thought, you know, I'll probably try to put a video together uh, starting from the beginning to end on how to set up Emulation Station. However, that's gonna take a little bit of time I don't have a whole lot of time on my hands just to make videos all day long. Uh, so I thought I would at least provide this little video here. Um, that's kind of like a direct um, overview of a, like a recent question that I got asked about how to get um, Wii and PlayStation 2 games working with Emulation Station. And as I thought about it, instead of focusing just on those two emulators, um, I'll try to get just a brief rundown of exactly how um, the systems config file works within Emulation Station. I think if um, you're asking about how to get uh, specific emulators running, um, then you might be missing the concept of how they work in the first place, but that's okay. Uh, the systems config file is a little complicated at the beginning, but once you understand it, uh, it's not super difficult to um, kind of manipulate and get uh, a better handle on. So this is the systems config file. It's what everything is pointed to. It takes the ROMs from one folder and points them to the emulator that should be ran when they're clicked on an emulation station. Um, if you scroll down here, you'll see that most of my stuff is pointing to RetroArch. That was kind of like my original configuration. And then once you understand it, it's pretty easy to do. Um, this one is already configured for me. I'm literally standing on the shoulders almost of somebody else. I did not make all of this myself. However, if you see here, um, this is for GameCube and I'm not pointing to RetroArch because RetroArch will not play Wii or GameCube games. Um, Dolphin does. That emulator is a fantastic emulator. In fact, they just came out with an update not too long ago, fixing all kinds of bugs and... Uh, making the library of uh, available ROMs to play even larger, which is freaking awesome. So just remember that Emulation Station doesn't actually play any games. It has no idea. It doesn't do anything like that. It's just an archiving system. And in fact, it doesn't even have any ROMs. All it is is just a front end that points to a folder with ROMs and then pairs those ROMs with emulators. Uh, programs, systems that are, exist on the uh, computer itself. So what I would suggest doing is if you're having a hard time getting emulation stations set up, um, but you have the basics kind of running and everything, go online and download any emulator you want to. For example, you can do Dolphin. Um, download your ROMs, rip your games, whatever you want to in the <clears throat> quote unquote legal way and um, get those in a folder and kind of get everything set up ahead of time. So you'll see for me, my path for my ROMs is my E drive slash ROMs slash GC for GameCube. Um, then what I've done is I've placed the Dolphin emulator once I've got it working, which isn't too hard. You pretty much just install it and mess with a couple of configurations to get your controller working or whatever. Um, I've dumped that into the systems folder in Emulation Station. So this may look um, extremely different from yours. Don't be freaked out by that. I have a ton of extra files in here. So don't try to match apples for apples with what I've got here and go, oh, no wonder his works and mine doesn't. He's got extra files. These are all junk. This is just for demonstration purposes. Um, but you should always have a systems folder within Emulation Station. Double click on that and you will see outside of RetroArch, which is a conglomeration of different types of, you know, emulators that can play a wide variety of games. I've got a bunch of other stuff in here for PlayStation 2, for Dreamcast, Arcade. Um, I have this for extra stuff and then even Dolphin. Hey, so you'll notice that my drive uh, F is not matching my drive E. Uh, once again, this is all like kind of thrown together and stuff like that. Uh, we'll just imagine that my four terabyte drive is drive E <laughs> for um, demonstration purposes. Dolphin is in here. It runs. Here is dolphin.exe. 
So we'll come back over here and basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that the dot emulation station system dolphin dolphin exe all matches your path that it exists in. So that's very simple. Um, if I've lost you there, you might need a little bit of uh, learning and just basic windows and stuff like that. So, uh, but no, no hard feelings or anything. Um, once that matches, um, you're pretty much good to go. You'll want to keep this uh, quotes percent ROM underscore raw command. You'll notice that all of them exist within there, all the same, you know, same thing with these. Uh, Dolphin, just for a little bit of extra information, in order for it to start the way it's supposed to with an emulation station, it needs this minus E. If you've been banging your head against a brick wall like I did, uh, where you keep clicking on the ROM and it doesn't, the game doesn't start within Dolphin and you don't know what's happening. The second that you add this in, and I had someone ask me earlier in a comment about a different video and I gave it to him and it worked, <laughs> is the minus E. Some of them need these little, you know, extra attributes or whatever based on how the emulator was created. This isn't something that's specific to emulation station. It's not something that's specific to ROMs. It's however the emulator was built. So for Dolphin, however they did it, if you run an executable in a command line with a minus E, it will then know to append or somehow open up the ROM file without trying to acknowledge or prompt for it or anything like that. So when in doubt, do a little bit of homework, do a little bit of research and see if you can come up with you know, some answers if you're kind of stuck in a certain spot. But for the most part, that's all there is to it. Stick your ROMs in a folder, make sure the paths match, populate it. If they populate an emulation station, you, you, your step one is done. You're good to go. Then go ahead and make sure that the path is pointed to the right emulator. Click the enter button or A on your controller or whatever. And if you even get just the program starting, you, you've got fire. You're good to go. You, you, you're doing it correctly. If for some reason the emulator isn't continuing, you know, to start the game and get into the game and let you play the game, then it's just a method of debugging and finding out what's going on with it and stuff like that. Dolphin is pretty easy and self-explanatory. It just needs this minus E at the end to open up and start working. Um, I think PlayStation 2, like PSSX2, doesn't even need an extra attribute at the end. Um, to get these things working, go into your system folder and um, make sure that you're looking at uh, all your emulators and making sure they run appropriately. You should be able to double click on the exe folder, the executable file, like Dolphin, and start playing it without emulation station even in the mix. If you can do that, then you're good. If you can't, then there's your other problem is you're dealing with a corrupted emulator. You didn't install it right. It's looking for something that you can't find, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I understand this is a really fast crash course in this, but I hope that this kind of provides a little bit of extra information about how this interfaces with emulation station. Um, I'll just try to do a little bit of a diagram here. <laughs> this will be kind of funny. So we have our emulation station folder and we'll open our systems folder in, a, in another window here. Just try to kind of think of it like this too. All of this in the emulation station exe, the executable looks for this in here. It's pretty simple. Every time you click on a game within an emulation station, if you've configured it correctly within your config file, it's just going to point into in here or anywhere else on your computer for that matter. You don't even really need to have it in a systems folder here. It can exist anywhere. It just points to places on your computer. And then make sure that the executable that you're pointing to is correct. So, um, if you're still getting hung up and everything, here's my suggestion. Do a fresh install of uh, Emulation Station and add one system. Add um, Fusion. Fusion is a Sega Genesis 
um, emulator, and it is extremely easy to set up. You double click on the executable for a fusion and it's already running. Stick that in a folder and get it to work with that. Start with the basics. Start with something that's very easy and very simple to set up and go from there. If RetroArch is over your head and it's getting too confusing, simplify it. Make it really easy. Just start out with one system. If you can get one system to work, you know what you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing it. Uh, don't want to beat a dead horse. Thanks, guys. Leave a bunch of questions in the comments below. Um, I don't always know what everybody else is thinking. I only know what I know. But I enjoy making these videos, and I think that the little community of people that like, you know, Emulation Station and all those other different front ends, it's really fun. It's exciting. It's a time for us to be able to put together old games that we didn't get to play before, or we just want to play again, you know. So uh, like this if you like it. Thumbs down if you didn't like it. Subscribe. Give me ideas. Um, help me grow my channel, guys. Uh, thanks a lot. Guys, have a good day.